article. So uh, this article was in FateMag.com. The reason I'm saying this because this guy, we're going to disagree with him here. Okay. But this is what he says. He says, I propose that in reality, our biggest existential threat is not from any environmental catastrophe. Catastrophe or whatever. <laughs> catastrophe. Catastrophe. <laughs> What's catastrophe. The catastrophe. Catastrophe. It's the, it's the <laughs> Russian catastrophe. But instead, from our own man made transition from natural human being to cyborg mm. via electronic devices and interfaces. Yeah. So you thinking like things like wetware? Like yeah, but he goes on. We are at a turning point from our species, turning point, notice that word, mm-hmm. in which our natural humanity is gradually being converted into an artificial format. Already, we are increasingly relying on smart devices to the point that they become more mere extensions of our body. You know, and he's talking about Neuralink, uh, in one sensors, you know, with Elon Musk and all that stuff. But he's getting into that he thinks AI is artificial intelligence is our biggest existential threat. Why? How could it be? The only way it could become a threat is if we allow the AI to have full sovereignty over our systems and the people who designed it are ones that have some sort of background of wanting to control. So like, he, cause he goes into this near link. He said, could this lead to an entirely new species of human with unlimited memory, unlimited calculation ability? First of all, species is incorrect. Species is a fundamental factor of an evolutive development of human beings and their genetic code. Just because I'm throwing uh, electronic signals that are artificial from the outside, essentially synthesizing my body does not create a new species. It's just altering the way that species chooses to exist. Do you think that, that it, yeah, it would alter evolution? So spe- like in the sense, do you think 10 kids from then, as that technology evolves, how much will it biologically take over I actually think our I, thought process? I'm glad you asked. I actually think it's going to inhibit it. I think it'll become lazy and reliant. Mm. Because you're not right. So it would be like a blob. It, you know, it'd be different if it was like everybody knew how to enhance their algorithms. Okay. And if I am having an interaction with this thing, I can tell it the interactions I want. But if right. it's a predefined algorithm by some sort of outside party telling me how I should develop, now I'm doing something totally unknown. Yeah. Could you imagine like Pepsi, Frito Lay? Yeah. Being in charge of like, yeah, you need to go. To you need store. to go buy more uh, chips. chips. Yeah, exactly. Right <laughs> now. Yeah, more soda. Marvel's like, you need to smoke more. Yeah. Now yeah. people are paying for ad space on your Neuralink. <laughs> yeah, that, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, he says, will these technological advances change the format of our lives or more fundamentally the format of our being? No, you can't change the format of our being. What it does is it makes people more lazy and less evolutive. Why? Because your reliance then goes to something on the outside in the material rather than your internal evolution on the mm, inside. Right, right. What is that one thing? You know, all those movies you see where people are like in a prison camp or something, like the one thing they can't take from you is your mind. Mm. Right? Right. So what happened when you start handing over synapses in the material format? Do you think, do you think these systems – I'm going to use an example with Tartle, uh, and I'm going to get kind of like businessy right, real quick. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. So I'm running ads – well, no, we'll just use HDL. Let's talk about HDL. Sure. So I'm running some HDL ads okay. um, to bring awareness to people. The AI-generated images do 10 times better than any other image I run through there. Sure. I wonder, is the computer recognizing that an AI made that image? Is it why is it oh, the AI? Oh, oh, why is it the AI images are 10xing? Well, I'll tell you why. Every time. I'll tell you why. The, Im- the image you had created by the AI is taking all of the input from the internet from what society is already importing, inputting as things they want to see. Mm, this makes sense. Yeah. So rather than you coming in as this third party saying, Marketing class 401, here we go. Yeah. Rather than me coming in and say, all right, I'm going to design an ad and I think this is going to be best and we're going to go test it. Why mm-hmm. do that? Just use a generative machine That's what's gonna that everybody participates in and then have that create your ad for we you. We just created something. You Did know? you just say, this is giving me right here. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, I, I wanted to play around with it because I was like, "Well, it makes, you it, came to the same conclusion I did." But it makes uh, tremendous I'll, sense. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. Was yeah, very, yeah. very astute of you. Yeah, ladies well, and gentlemen, we, this we is know. why he's the chief conscious marketing officer uh, of Turtle. Yeah, we were talking to a London bank the other day, and he called yep. me my you, i.e. idiot savant. So yeah, idiot me? savant. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. that. That's the highest compliment I could pay uh, someone. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's why I don't have shoelaces on my shoes. No, I know, and that's why you're going to be deaf to the piano in no time. Thanks, Mozart. The piano, that movie. Remember that movie? <laughs> Great <laughs> film. Weird. Great film. <laughs> they won an Oscar, though. That dude won an Oscar. I no, yeah, he that. did. Yeah, that was a yeah. wild movie. 
So what are we going to hear? This existential threat here. <laughs> so with the development of seamless bioelectronic interfaces, allowing better communication between living organisms and machines and RFID chips introduced into the body, hacking is likely to become a serious issue. Can I, can I ask you something here? Say I shove my body full of all this electronic synthesized shit. You know what it reminds me of? Self-help books. Mm, you are right. Great. It's like electronic self help books oh, hooked to you. Yeah, just I want. Why read self help books? Right. Just inject that shit right into my neck. What good's that going to do? You haven't learned anything. You're looking for shortcuts to life yes. to run your life. Guess what? Life requires work. Stop being so fucking lazy. Mm-hmm. Take the catalyst of life. Hundred percent. And enjoy the learning and the difficulties, the trials and tribulations of life, and realize that it is a function of striving and evolution for everyone. Well, for you, every plant, every bug. Yes. Everything goes through this. Dude, dude, I was watching a show on ants the other day. And so there's like a hundred times more ants than humans. There's like trillions of ants. It's a population issue. Yeah, it's a population issue. This is directly affecting. But they're they're cool. They're 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 chill. Oh, okay. I mean, we don't see like ants just everywhere all the time. You no. put some sugar over there, you'll see some. They live on the ground. That's why. Yeah. But I mean, it's like their whole idea is, and they were showing like uh, how how they work and like that whole idea. In the Bible, there's a, there's a proverb in the Bible. That, on that ants? Says, it says you're going to love this. In the old King James, I love it. It says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. <laughs> yeah. You want to know why? You want to see efficiency in yes. group work? Yes. Go look at an ant house. Yeah, exactly. Sluggard. But the, yeah, so it's like this. I you love lazy that word. Fuck. I got to yeah. write that down. <laughs> yeah, you lazy <laughs> fuck. It's sluggard. <laughs> Get some work done. Yeah. Look, but so what what are we taught? This is creation law. Go back to creation. Look and see what are these fuckers doing? Service to others only. Only. That's, That's all, all it is. Yeah. Oh, what do they do? They have the land in front of them. That's what they get to use. And they were showing like how how efficient and honeybees are the same way. We've talked about honeybees before, but ants, it's like how efficient they are. And they have to learn. They have to work in the nursery and help the queen out. And then as they get older, then they do more tasks and they develop sensors and stuff like that. Oh, and somebody, and somebody they, has an input. What am I going to do? Share with the rest of the group. Yeah. Oh, what a fantastic little social memory complex going yeah, on. And they have like emotions and all kinds of shit. People don't realize how complex creation is. We, we Screw the AI. Just make supersized ants. I'm still your construction. Put wetware inside an ant. Go have the thing build a building for you. Well, I think I think a lot of people don't understand this either. Just our sight. From what the universe is, the dark matter, everything that we have in our sight. And I was listening to a physicist say this a couple months ago. He said, and what we can see on the color spectrum, just on the color spectrum, not the other types of don't spectrums that are out there right and everything Don't else. Don't me with some truth goes, right now. If you, take, if you take our vast universe, put a pinhead on a map in a universe, and then put the tiniest speck that you can put on that pinhead, that's the equivalent to how much we as humans can see. He goes, we're basically blind. 